Hey guys, this is Jack Bevere at Dominion. I wanted to record a quick video to explain a concept that um, I don't think is well understood, not hard to understand, but um, I think would be helpful for you in your real estate investing business. It's uh, just some basic bond math to figure out uh, so that you can understand uh, how the price of bonds changes. And when I say bonds, what I really mean is the loans that you are getting uh, secured by uh, the real estate that you own. That's a bond, and the math is the same as a U.S. Treasury bond or GE corporate bonds. It all behaves the same. Mortgages uh, have a unique uh, attribute that I want to uh, go over specifically, though. And for everybody who did borrowing for, for over the past two years, I want to explain how uh, one of your greatest assets, you may not even realize that... Um, the debt that you borrowed over the past two years is probably one of the greatest assets that you have in your portfolio, not just your real estate, but the loans that you have. And I wanna explain the math behind that, that idea. So I'm gonna quick share my screen. And um, so this is a graph of the uh, 30 year fixed mortgage rate over the past year. So pretty aggressive climb. Uh, more than doubling in the past year from 3.1 to almost seven. And uh, if you were a lender making this mortgage, uh, it has been a terrible, terrible year. And I want to explain to you the math behind that so you can really under understand how to quantify that idea. So this is a list of trades. So these were pools of loans that were sold between you know, insurance companies, big banks, mortgage REITs, doesn't really matter. But the reason that these, I uh, got this information from a, a mortgage loan trader, a uh, broker, um, and he wanted to illustrate how much the market has moved in such a short period of time from a value of the mortgage, from the value of the pools of mortgages. So these are actually eight different pools of mortgages. Uh, the reason that he chose these pools of mortgages uh, is that they're very similar to each other. They all have a uh, um, weighted average rate of about 3.2%. The pools are all about the same size. The FICOs are all about the same. The LTVs are all about the same. What's different over time is that the prices that these loans traded at has moved down aggressively over the course of the year. And uh, we're gonna actually even continue this out and at the end of this video, show you what this same pool of mortgages would trade at even today. And that'll really help understand, you know, you know drive in, I think, a point um, of how much um, money you've made on the mo loans that you took last year, I think is the right way to think about it. So here's the basic bond math. Basic bond math is if I've got a loan that it's a $100,000 loan, and I say, hey, you want to buy? Hey, Joe, you want to buy my hundred thousand dollar loan? Joe says, well, what you know? What's the security behind it? And I say, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a DSCR loan, and um, it's secured by first first mortgage lien on residential real estate, good debt service coverage, good FICO, et cetera, et cetera. And he says, all right, well, uh, what's you know, what's the interest rate on those loans? Uh, and you say it's six percent. So six percent is the is what you're offering him. And he goes out into the market and he says, well, how much could I go originate that same kind of loan for today? Like, what's the market for those loans today? And you say, and he goes out there and he finds out that it's seven and a half percent. I'm making up numbers here. And he says, all right, well, you want to, you want to, you want to sell me a loan that's six and a half or six percent. And I could go take my money and go offer a loan and go make that same loan, pretty much the same loan at seven and a half percent. So why am I going to take a loss or why am I not going to make as much money as I could rather um, buying your loan? Well, I'm not, gonna, you know, and you say, well, I'm not going to sell my hundred thousand dollar loan for you for a hundred thousand dollars. I'll sell it to you for less than a hundred thousand dollars. Make me an offer. So he he's trying to figure out what's the right number to buy that loan for. And the, the math is very simple. Uh, so he says, all right, he, he looks at these two numbers and he says, all right, you want me to take a one and a half percent. You want to leave, you want me to leave a, a point and a half on the table every year. And 
then the, the thing that I do is I say, all right, well, how long do I think that that loan is going to stay outstanding? And I'm like, you know what, given I look at, you know, these kind of loans have paid off in the past or go and I meet the person who's living there and I think they're going to stay for a long time. And <clears throat> so I say, all right, I, I think that this loan is going to, or this loan is going to stay outstanding for five years, but my over under is that it's going to pay off in five years. So you multiply the one and a half percent times five years, and that's 7.5%. And so that's the discount. Seven and a half percent is the discount off of par, par being a hundred cents on the dollar. So your, your bid, my bid on that loan is going to be 92 and a half. 92 and, and you know, it's either 92 and a half percent of the face value, um, 92 cents on 92 and a half cents on the dollar. All those things are interchangeable. Um, and this price here is that number right there. So that's the bond math. <clears throat> so mortgages have this interesting feature that we built in structurally as a, as an, as really as a country. And we said, we think it's a good idea for people to be able to borrow money on their house. And we think that 30 years makes it so, you know, if we give them 30 years to repay that loan, that gets the payment nice and low. Um, and so we'll, and we want, and we want it to be a fixed rate loan. We don't want people to have to, you know, to, to be subject to interest rate movements. We want them to be able to buy that house, budget for a payment and make that payment for 30 years and achieve the American dream. And so we've, we, we decided that a fixed rate loan was structurally a good thing for the, for American society. And not only did we say we want to offer people long-term 30 year fixed rate loans, but we also don't want to lock them in. We want the, them, we want the, the, the homeowner to have the option to move at any time or to refinance at any time. And so this is a this is an amazing business deal. You get to you get the opportunity to borrow money for a long time for a fixed rate and you get an option, you get a free option at any point to pay off that loan. What that ends up with, with the like that's that's that doesn't happen in commercial business transactions. That is only a thing that happens for the American homeowner. Nowhere else, no other bond market would, would allow that because it's so one-sided to the borrower of that money. The, um, but we decided as a country that it was a good thing for society. And so that's what we wanted to, to put in place. And it became a standard. The, the thing about that is that uh, in certain situations, the lender really becomes the loser because... Um, over time, you know, so for, the, so for the past 20 years, let, let me back up. So for the past 20 years, 30 years, we've had declining interest rates. And so people have either moved or refinanced every five to seven years, say. And because either they moved somewhere uh, to for a job or personal reasons, or they um, were, or, or interest rates have gone down, and they had the opportunity to get a lower rate. And so it made sense to refinance. And so these 30-year loans have been paying off on average every five to seven years because of that because of that option. Now, on the upside, though, when interest rates are climbing, people aren't going to want to, they're not going to want to give up that low interest rate because they were able to lock their lender in for 30 years and now the interest rate is much higher. So I may not want to move because it's going to be harder for me to get into a move up situation with the same payment. So I'm going to probably stay in my house for a lot longer. Or even if I'm going to move, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to want to keep that low interest rate in place. And so I'm not going to refinance it. So instead of people paying off these mortgages every five to seven years, they're probably going to stay for 10, 12 maybe, you know, who knows on, on average, but, you know, perhaps more, um, but something longer than what it has been over the past 20, 30 years. And so the thing about that is that when 
let's go back to the bond math. When the guy who's got this six and a half, or the guy who's got this um, uh, six and a half percent mortgage to sell, goes into the market and and say he's got a three percent mortgage to sell, which is basically actually three and a half percent mortgage. I think is what the reference point for these below is three and a half percent when we started here. Um, uh, he's got these mortgages to sell, and mortgage interest rates are today seven percent. Then this gap is pretty big, and the bigger that gap becomes the longer that person's probably going to stay in this loan like so the, the the as mortgage rates increase duration also increases and so it's double trouble from a from a bond seller point of view you're getting banged both on the opportunity cost of your capital and the fact that this that the other the guy on the other side of the the loan the borrower is able to keep you in that loan for an even longer amount of time so this Three, five years becomes call it 10 years to be conservative. And so this is now 35%. And so this 92 and a half is 65 cents on the dollar. And that's what we see happening down here in this, in this chart. We have 3.2% uh, mortgages that in January were trading at 94. Uh, because it was probably three and a half percent, and people were expecting, you know, uh, to stay for you know eight to ten years, and so that discount was only six six percent. So it was a ninety. The, the bid was ninety four, but then as these rates have kept going up and up and up and up, these prices are going down and they're accelerating down because not only is there a bigger gap between the 3.2% mortgage and what you could get in the market today. But also as, as, as we go here, the market is expecting this duration to go longer and longer and longer. So that, that feature is that, that feature, the fancy finance word for that is called negative convexity. And it refers to the shape of, if you graph the shape of a value of a bond um, between in, in, with interest rates and duration uh, as the two axes, the shape of that curve is negatively convex. Uh, you know, if you remember, if you can remember back to geometry, um, the the shape of that uh, curve is negatively convex, and that's and so but American mortgages uniquely in all the bonds, American mortgages uniquely have this feature of negative convexity, which makes them very dangerous to play in, in a rising interest rate environment, which is what we have had all year and who knows what we'll have in the future. So you've seen the same, basically the same mortgage, you know, kind of mortgages over the course of eight months go from being, I mean, when they were originated back in December, they were worth par, right? Like they were worth a hundred and they've gone from a hundred down to 73 and now, if we did this, this is 3.8. Now they're worth 62. So in one year, if you originated a loan last December to an American consumer, you know, a great loan, like going to pay off, like no issue there. Not Credit quality is not a problem. Just based off of the interest rate increases, you've you're, you've lost 38% on your money. You, you originated a loan worth 100 and today it's worth 62. Horrific, right? Like if you're, if, you're, if you're a lender in this environment, absolutely horrific environment to be lending money, uh, which is a big reason why we're seeing so much volatility and um, so much, uh, you know, situational distress really, uh, start to to creep up in, in in the economy right now is that this this kind of environment this vi you know aggressive like violent increase and if you look at this in the context of over the course of the past 10 years this is a vi like aggressively you know aggressive upswing 
And if you're on the other side of that trade, you're just getting smoked. Uh, and bond buyers have getting smoked all year. Uh, so they're super gun shy right now. And that's the math behind why. Because the stuff that they originated a year ago is now worth 62. Um, so anyway, I hope that uh, that helps you guys understand a little bit about what's going on in the market and why the changes are so aggressive. And I um, uh, hope that that helps you make the best decisions possible for your real estate investing business. Uh, thanks very much. Good talking to you guys.